Final 10.5 hours of extensions. Oh, shit. Around 15 minutes after this available. Nah, Pooh Shy see life's a mess, his baby mama. Bro, I can't lie. This is the last 10 hours of this nigga life, bro. Let's see what happens. I heard he was in a car shop or some shit. Balance footage was recorded. XXX Tentastion was shot and killed right at the front of this very same motorcycle store. Several gunshots roughly drive by. A uh, witness advised a black Dodge Journey shot somebody in a black BMW. Located within this mentioned black Dodge Journey were four individuals Michael Boatwright, Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, and Dedrick Williams. The last two having been seen on the surveillance footage next to XXX Tentacion just moments before the tragedy. Why were these two shady looking guys snooping around the motorcycle store in the minutes before his death? Jay, I still think Drake did it. I know a lot of y'all niggas like Drake did that shit, it's in the lyrics and all that. What was the motive behind the killing? Did the perpetrators know XXX Tentacion personally? After being pronounced dead at 4.51 p.m. that very same afternoon, investigators would look over the prior 10.5 hours of Jazzy Omfoy's life back to 6 a.m. that morning, at which point they discovered that his day started normally and that nothing was out of the ordinary. At 6.05 a.m. he'd begin the day with a game of League of Legends before logging off 22 minutes later at 6.27 a.m. Now- What the fuck? Nah, the feds got it, bro. The feds got it. They said he was playing League of Legends for 22 minutes. In five seconds. How do they know? Now, it's impossible to tell if he'd been playing the game all night or if he'd simply gotten up early and to have a quick match crazy before the day course. started. But either way, beginning his final day with video games didn't exactly seem unusual or indicate any awareness about the fate that was waiting for him that afternoon. However, X did seem to have a sneaking suspicion that he would eventually suffer a premature death. In an Instagram live stream from December 2017, six months prior, XXX Tentacion discussed both the possibility of death whilst outlining what he hoped his legacy might become when he did eventually die. If I'm gonna die or ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least five million kids happy, or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life. In the weeks and months that followed this Instagram live stream, X had both increased his security and vowed to never leave his house alone, which would be discussed by a friend and producer ZX Flow, who stated he did not travel alone. He never traveled alone. He knew that he has enemies. Obviously, he would not go places alone. I know there were people who were very jealous and envious of him. He came from an area where not a lot of people make it out. Damn, bro. XXX Tentacion had grown up Great in God, Florida, that, Florida, a suburban area which in 2014 was ranked as the eighth most dangerous small city in theories. America. And if we examine X's upbringing in the area, it's really no surprise that by his final day on earth, he had certainly created some enemies. A lot of hills like the hood, a lot of hills like- So, okay, you grew up in the hood. Wait, you're a fighter? You've been getting a lot of fights? Um, bro, I've been fighting since I was a kid. What, he's always been throwing the hands or what? I mean, I've been there plenty situations, like plenty fights. After growing up in somewhat of- Who the fuck was that? That's Simi? Bro, why that sound like your raised man's? Why that sound exactly like your raised man's? What the fuck? Up in the hood. Why, you're a fighter? You've been getting a lot of fights? Um, bro. Oh, nigga, stupid. No, I don't know shit. I've been fighting this since I was a kid. What, he's always been throwing the hands or what? I mean, I've been there plenty since. Bro, that sound exactly like your raised man's, bro. Right, um, bro, I've been fighting this since I was a kid. What, he's always been throwing the hands or what? I mean, I've been there plenty situations, like plenty fights. After growing up in somewhat of a rough environment, with his mother being a stripper and his father partly a <laughs> drug dealer, fighting people became a regular part of XXX Tentacion's life, almost like a hobby. He'd be enrolled in the school choir during elementary school. Bro, you cannot go to school, bro. No wonder, bro. You can't go to school when your mom's a stripper. As soon as they find out, ain't your mom peaches? Shake ass on the po like, bro. I'm knocking niggas out, bro. School where he began to develop his love for music. Yo, be kicked yeah, out after punching another band that 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 word, nigga, that's not fair. Public performance. Like I was in choir, ended up getting kicked out while we was literally doing a performance the fuck because this nigga shirt he kept off? touching me when we were what singing. Being kicked out of educational institutions for fighting became somewhat of a trend in X's life. After the school choir event, he'd then be expelled from Margate Middle School after kicking another kid in the mouth, whilst also getting into a fight with a random person who had provoked him on the bus ride home. As a result of X's short fuse in the eighth grade his mother well, was i hated them niggas bro so i know y'all all know niggas like this that just always wanted to fight for no reason well they had a reason nigga they was going through shit and they had in their house but they came to school and just always wanted to fight like everything had to always escalate to a fight like shit was so annoying
him out of home, at which point he'd go and live with his grandmother, who lived in a gated community reputable for drug dealing and gang violence, a place where XXX Tentacion would come to find even more enemies. In this area, X came into the possession of a firearm and began to take part in armed robberies, ultimately resulting in his first nine month stint in a Florida juvenile detention center. While locked up, X would meet another individual by the name of Stokely Cleavon Goldborn, who would later come to be known as Ski Mask the Slump God. Stokely Cleavon. Bro, these niggas' names, bro. I never knew this nigga name was Stokely Cleveland. Get out our own, they kicked us out. We met in jail. We met in jail. Having come from the same county, X and Ski Master decided after leaving prison, then meet up to continue their life of crime together. However, after noticing that they both had a mutual interest in freestyle rapping, they would instead leave prison, purchase a blue snowball microphone, and enter a substantially safer business, music. Yeah, we need an outlet to just stop getting in trouble. He ordered um, the stuff Damn, off of man. eBay. It was like a... Bro, I didn't know they went back that far, that far. I didn't even know Ski was from Florida, nigga. Snowball mic, Audacity, and like a laptop. XXX Tentacion would create his first ever song alongside Ski Mask titled New Slash Flock. Then what does this have to do with his last 10.5 hours? Post it to SoundCloud after his release from prison with his second song, Vice City, discussing this desire to leave his life of crime in the past. From this point onwards, X would become so serious about his music career that over four years later, on the final day of his life, creating music was still very much a daily habit. Because at around 8 a.m., approximately an hour and a half after logging okay. into League of Legends at 6.27 a.m., X would work on the beat for a new song recorded two days prior titled Chase Glass Shards, which would, unbeknownst to him at the time, be the last piece of music he ever worked on. This would continue over the next Damn. six hours between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. in the process interacting with his girlfriend Genesis who had become sick and was considering seeing a doctor. Without the knowledge that after that afternoon he'd never see Genesis ever again, X had something else on his mind, buying a new motorbike. At 3.11 p.m. X would FaceTime his mother for two minutes asking if she'd accompany him to a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach to which she would say no sparking an argument resulting in her agreeing to instead go to the doctor with Genesis. Vowing to never leave the house alone, XXX Tentacion would instead head to the dealership with his step uncle, stopping by the Bank of America on the way over. X pulled up to the bank driving his one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, this is the last picture I've seen, bro. A BMW i8, whilst wearing a gold chain and a two thousand dollar Louis Vuitton bag. He walked in calmly and withdrew fifty thousand dollars in cash, placing each and every one hundred dollar bill neatly into his Louis Vuitton bag. At which point he'd be noticed by the four previously mentioned suspects: Michael Boatwright, Trayvon Newsom, Rob. How? How was they at? It was at the bank? It was at the bank? But Allen and Dedrick Williams establishing a potential motive for the killing, financial gain. Just weeks prior to this $50,000 cash withdrawal. But that's another thing, like, bro. It's for ya. You don't have. Like, Chad, I, I don't. I don't know. It's the heat of the moment. You could, I could always talk shit in hindsight. But, bro, I would not kill that nigga, bro. I would take that nigga bread. We go split it. As long as he ain't see us, feel me? We did the job right. Now the next time we see that nigga out, we know he gonna have the bag on him too. And then we gonna get that nigga and get like, bro, you fucking up opportunities. Girl, XXX Tentacion had signed ain't a deal for Ain't fucked up your dad. life, uh, the... Clearly with the mug shots, what the fuck? Studio album worth a reported 10 million US dollars. However, landing such a lucrative a deal was no work in the lie. park. Continuing on from where we left off earlier, after releasing Vice City in 2014, rapping about his desire to leave his life of crime in the past, X continued to release music, yet failed to achieve any success in the beginning. Having no following whilst being fresh out of prison, led X to take on a nine to five day job, working as an over the phone electricity salesman. I only done one <laughs> job and I was a sales broker because I knew how to run my mouth. Electricity salesman. Hello, my name <laughs> Is on for you from uh, Energy Solutions. How are you doing today? Around a year and a half later, on the 30th of December 2015, Damn, XXX Tentacion would drop one of his now most infamous songs titled Look at Me. The Look track would come to be known as a sleeper hit, laying dormant for over a year before exploding in early 2017. I did it go However, viral. In the process, X began to build a cult following of incredibly loyal supporters for his unique sound and style. XXX Tentacion. I, I, I wanted no, to ask you about no, him. No, 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 no he's, he's, he's still growing and you know he's very young and, and as every artist, you know, is growing. When, is he, this? when he speaks, you know, he can tell he's actually he's an, an intelligent guy, individual sure. he's not he's not a dumbass dude and he i think he has he actually has a message so by early 2016, around two Thank years after beginning his music pants. career, he had achieved 18,500 followers on SoundCloud, yet had so become one of the most gay, highly bro. requested rappers to be interviewed on Adam 22's No Jumper podcast. Like, I have a cult fan base, so I don't have like a weak ass fan base. Like you have a crazy ass following on social media and stuff, and like, it's not like necessarily the craziest nah, like, numbers, like 10,000 like or whatever. Bro. Or how many are you on SoundCloud? Um, SoundCloud, I'm not 18, 18.5. 18. Just the number of people who have asked me to interview you is.
insane. Like yeah. considering you know eighteen point five like yeah, million artists. Yeah, like the number million. of tweets I had to read about you. Man. However, XXX Tentacion was unable to stay out of trouble with the law, and only I three months after the previously me. shown interview would be jailed once again for robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. After posting his bail set at ten thousand dollars, he'd be released. However, only three months after that, he'd be arrested once again after being accused of domestic violence against his girlfriend. God at the damn, time. bro. The interesting thing about rappers, however, is that criminal charges and prison sentences are often glorified by their fans and seem to do wonders Facts. for keeping them relevant. This Facts. is exactly what happened to XXX Tentacion, as it would ironically be I during this third going to jail, jail that his notoriety in music career, career would like. find its way into the mainstream. <laughs> as long as you can in get January out. 2017, his song, Look At Me, which had been released over 12 months prior, peaked at number 34 on the US Hot 100 Billboard after X had been locked up for two months and Damn. was doing absolutely nothing to promote it, while many of his other songs began to trend alongside it. His newly found notoriety whilst in prison led to countless six-figure record label offers under the assumption nah, that it was going to be lie, even bro. bigger after being released this from prison. XXX Tentacion ended up spending you six months behind bars during this third true. stint and was released in you. April 2017 with more fame, more fans, and more enemies than ever. After receiving a deal worth an but estimated still, six I'm million dollars for the production of his second studio album titled Question Mark, X would purchase a 1.4 million dollar mansion in Parkland, Florida to house bro, dude, Question Mark. I ain't gonna lie, Florida house is just like the best, bro. Six million dollars. Is this just secured or like? The production of his second studio. Nigga could just drive right down that shit. Your album titled Question Mark, X would purchase a $1.4 million mansion in Parkland, Florida to house him, his girlfriend, and his mom. In the space of one year and three months, X had gone from an underground artist in prison to a multi-millionaire mainstream celebrity. However, while X had certainly fire. built the fame and fortune, perhaps he didn't have enough time to build the high level of wisdom required to manage his high status position, bringing us back to the moment that he withdrew $50,000 cash on his very final day. The reasoning behind why X felt the need to carry such a a large amount of money in physical $100 bills is anyone's best guess. Perhaps he knew the dealership would give him a better price if he paid with physical cash, or maybe he just wanted to feel like a baller. Word, nigga, you better walk around with a check, nigga, a checkbook. With the average American salary in his Actually backpack. However, if X never made this withdrawal, the outcome at the end of the day might have been incredibly different. Because after leaving the bank, X would be followed by the four previously mentioned so was at the bank. motorsports, all of which arriving at 3.30 p.m. approximately 10 minutes later. It's like X. I can't even blame him because the same shit happened to me, bro. The same shit happened to me. Like, maybe he just got too comfy. Because how you can't realize niggas is following you? Maybe not in a vehicle, but bro, at the bank, like, then they at the uh the dealership, like, bro, they followed you for mad long, bro. And that has that shit that happened to me when I came back from college. Because I was in college, I think it was like Thanksgiving break. It was some type of break, nigga. I can't, but I haven't been home in like a year or, or like, like, not even like, like five, six months. So, nigga, all my hood instincts is gone. Like, they just disappear. Like, they, or they're not, they just lying dormant. They're not activated yet. Because, nigga, out there, I'm just worried about, at that time, it was about killer clowns. That's what was going on in the news, nigga. Clowns going on campuses. I was worried about uh, the white people was racist or not. I wasn't worried about street politics, nigga. So, anyways. Nigga, I'm walking from the train station, but me and my mans or whatever the case, bro, it's a nigga following us from the train station the whole time, three train stations later, bro, and I didn't even realize, and that's how I almost got robbed from my coat, but yeah, y'all already know that story, Tom, but yeah, it's like, nigga, I wasn't on P's and Q's, and neither was this nigga, bro. Two of the alleged perpetrators robbed- Nigga already told this story like shit, but I didn't tell, retold the story, I just said, making them feel me? A comparison. You see how you was so quick to dick ride? And I didn't even tell the story? You see how you was so quick to dick ride and I didn't even tell the story? But like, Alan and Dedrick Williams are seen walking right next I don't know to XXX Tentacion. Look back on me where that's facts. He looked at bikes, with the other two alleged perpetrators, Michael Boatwright and Trayvon Newsom, waiting outside in the Black Dodge journey. 25 minutes later, at 3.55 p.m., XXX Tentacion would go to drive out of the motorcycle dealership before the Dodge journey would block the exit, at which point two masked men jumped out of the car and demanded X's Louis Vuitton That's bag crazy. and gold chain. The thieves would successfully take both of the men jumped out to drive out of the motorcycle dealership before the Dodge journey. Bro, wait, what? How is this door open? Why is this door open and why did he not? Why is he stopping? There's a lot of space right there. Am I bugging? I need to see the full altercation because there's a lot of space for me to keep driving this motherfucker. I think his guy ran. I thought his guy was a step uncle. That's crazy. 
it, at which point two masked men jumped out of the car and demanded X's Louis Vuitton bag and gold chain. The thieves would successfully take both of these items after a bit of a struggle, however, even though the robbery was over, when X looked at one of the men directly in the eyes, he'd take two steps back and do the unthinkable. Bay, this yeah, that was, bro, he killed that nigga for no reason, bro. He dipped. Something that has really stunned fans of XXX Tentacion, a rising star here in South Florida. Fans began to gather here right after learning about the shooting that claimed his life. They just held a moment of silence, but they've been here listening to his music, praying and lighting candles in his memory. Disgustingly, in the hours after X's death, Dedrick Williams, one of the suspects, would record a video of himself happily dancing around with dumb nigga, bro. Fucking dumb nigga, A bunch bro. of $100 bills. Also spending $800 on designer clothes at a Fort Lauderdale store. GPS on his phone put him at the motorsport store a minute before the shooting that affidavit said. The day after. Bro, ah, uh, yeah, bro. It's like, there is zero intelligence in these niggas, bro. Killing. It's Similarly, zero police would find a $400 niggas, receipt for clothing and shoes in a garbage can at Michael Boatwright's I'm house by just 13 days after X's death. However, while these complete and utter scumbags were living it up on their newly found unearned fortune, X's music career was having its own after death explosion. When he passed, bro, I went up a million followers. General. Anything that had to do with him. Went up. I mean, yeah, it's weird to see like like his Instagram followers doubled when he passed. He went from like seven to fourteen. Like it's just crazy to see how people react when somebody passes. As mentioned in an article bitch. written by Hype Beast, sales of his first studio album Seventeen jumped up nine thousand percent, while his sophomore question mark project released back in March saw a staggering forty one thousand three hundred six percent spike in less than twenty four hours after his tragic death. Similarly, his average monthly YouTube music viewership jumped from one hundred and fifty million per month to four hundred million per month following his death, Damn, giving him a permanent bro. increase in the value of his music as an offset to his passing. It was Damn, kind of bro. like karma, a superstition that X certainly believed in. I believe in past lives and future lives. I believe in the karmic cycle. I believe until you align the karmic cycle, you nothing else matters. However, by the same token, after X had been to prison twice for armed robbery himself, perhaps his own death during an armed robbery was, as he put it, the karmic cycle realigning oh itself. However, no matter how poor X's prior decisions might have been, they weren't nearly as stupid as those involved in the killing. With bullet casings at the scene of the crime matching he guns him? owned by the perpetrators, and evidence as obvious as Diedrich Williams purchasing a neoprene mask from the motorcycle store just minutes prior to the robbery, each of the four men were arrested one by one in the two months that followed the tragic event. Isn't the perpetrator a goddamn this nigga bought the black ski mask from the motorcycle side that he was robbing the nigga outside of bro i can't lie bro you i don't wish death i don't wish incarceration on no man but bro you need to chill there for a long time bro think about what you did like what the fuck bro would have their fingerprints taken and would each face a pre-examination. No However, almost thought four process years later, this, the men are still yet like... to face trial and have therefore received no charges. However, this hasn't stopped XXX Tentacion's father one by one in the two months that followed the tragic event. The perpetrators would have their fingerprints taken and would each face a pre-examination. However, almost four years later, the men are still yet to face trial and have therefore received no charges. However, this hasn't Wait. stopped. Wait, so they're not in jail? Oh shit. XXX Tentacion's father, Dwayne. Or are they in jail? Yo, thank for the follow. I appreciate you, game. When I make it home, look to the sky and I say, Wait, are they not in jail? Or are they in jail, but niggas just didn't feel me get no trial yet? Like, his chat. Niggas don't be charged. Niggas don't be getting no trial. Niggas don't see a judge, but they still be in jail for months, years. Like, they be hoeing niggas, bro. They are in jail. Onfroy from expressing what he hopes might happen to the perpetrators. Y'all killed that young man, that father, that son, that brother, without a cause. I say this, no malice in my heart. I'm seeking life without parole for the participants in the robbery and cold-blooded murder of my son, and the man who pulled the trigger, I'm going to seek the death penalty. Yeah, bro. Tell blessings on one hand, but I'm grateful. When I make it home, look to the sky and I say thank you. I peeked the snakes up in the grass, I couldn't play cool. If they put the up and leave, nigga, they was meant to.